أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلوات وأتم التسليم على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين In episode 1 of the 10 day family plan we gave an introduction and we spoke about the crisis that we are in and how we are able to develop a better understanding of the importance of family and the values that Islam has introduced as far as the perimeters and boundaries of making a society better. And we need to do this, we need to focus on this because it's going to benefit us ourselves primarily and it's also going to build a greater future for our next generations. And that's why I chose to talk about this particular topic and of course I need to rush into the various issues that needs to be uh, tackled to make sure that I cover what is necessary in this 10-day family plan. Now of course it's for you my dear brother, my dear sister to further develop this and uh, research, study, read about all of these issues, watch more programs. Alhamdulillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me uh, the tawfiq of having various uh, recordings uh, and TV programs um, on this particular topic as far as parenting one-on-one -on -one or as far as uh, life, uh, key, the key of life program or the other topics and programs that I have recovered and Alhamdulillah many other people way better than me have also covered these things. It's only for us to uh, turn to these programs and to utilize them and implement them. That's what I said in episode one. It's not just you knowing about it, but you also practicing it as well. And so what is the solution to this crisis? What are the issues that we need to address to overcome these obstacles? Is it easy to start a family? Yes. Is marriage easy? Yes. Is finding a partner easy? Absolutely. What about sustaining the family? What about having a healthy household? What about making sure that the children that you introduce into this world are of great character? What about all of these issues that need to be avoided that we spoke about as far as uh, the uh, disintegrating of uh, the family, as far as divorce, as far as uh, issues to do with uh, instability or dysfunctionality of uh, a family, violence, abuse, all of these other things. How about depression and things that could also contribute to a person's mental uh, illness. These things, if we don't cater to them as well, and if we don't avoid what needs to be avoided, then of course we're going to uh, add uh, to the statistics and we're just going to, you know, um, in no way be able to contribute to that which is good. And therefore, what do we need to turn to? Um, as far as these solutions, is it something that we need to look up into as far as uh, today's law is concerned? Government law, man-made law, uh, the constitution of the country that you live in, um, is it religion, is it scripture? Uh, and even when it does come to religion and scripture, whose interpretation? What kind of madhab is it? What kind of sect are you following? And it doesn't matter whether it be in Islam or whether it be outside of Islam. There are many different interpretations when it does come to something like family planning and um, uh, issues to do with a household. When we look at something like man-made laws or when we look at uh, what the government imposes as far as rules and regulations for family and um, marriage and things like that. 
Is it constantly evolving or is it fixed? Are there things that can be uh, dynamic or are, and are there things that are fixed and stay as they are? It doesn't matter how or when or where, it's always going to be applicable um, to you. Or do we look at social norms and the ever evolving changes as far as social requirements and changes? Something that was really, really bad and shunned upon 10 and 20 and 30 and 40 years ago is absolutely normal today. Or something that was uh, very normal then is absolutely uh, wrong and bad today in the social eyes, of course. So, you know, with that kind of uh, chameleon life, of always changing, what do you do as a Muslim man, woman? What do you do? Do you contort and change at every instant, at every situation, with every development and evolving and change that happens in the society that you live in? Or are there fixed issues, fixed laws that you abide by and you never change. Of course, my opinion is that we need to always be as traditional as possible. And don't get me wrong when I say traditional by thinking that that means we stick to our culture. And even with the word culture, unfortunately, it's changed into some, some kind of very negative uh, meaning. Not all culture is bad. You've got wonderful culture. You've got culture that aligns itself with Islamic values and then you've got negative culture, you've got bad culture, you've got archaic culture, you've got also when it comes to traditions as well, sometimes traditions and customs could be good, sometimes they could be uh, bad. If we were to uh, see the traditional sense of Islam in its core values, and not only Islam, in other religions as well, in, it, in their core value, we would see that that would be the best way to go. Because Islam in its core values is always going to address our concerns no matter where and no matter when. Yes, we need to, of course, uh, keep up with the views, the fiqhi views, the jurisprudential laws and rules and regulations of the faqih al-jami' al sharait the marja' taqlid, who we know is observing the matters of zaman and makan in order for him to accommodate to what is needed as far as the fatwa is concerned. That's a different topic altogether, but I'm saying it's not something as dry as some people might uh, think. And this is why when it does come to solutions, it's Islam. And not only just Islam, but the Islam of Ahlul Bayt السلام, The Islam of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. The Islam of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi, of Fatima to Zahra, of Ali ibn Abi Talib, and the offspring, the Imams after Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, جميعاً, peace be upon them all, that's the kind of Islam, that's the type of Islam that will cater to all of our needs, especially here when it comes to something like family and family values. And therefore, when I say that marriage isn't difficult, and when I say that having children is also, there's no difficulty whatsoever in that. And I say that, but it's sustaining the family. It's keeping the family intact. It's making sure that this till death do us part really does manifest itself in our lives but how are you able to do that it all starts first and foremost with understanding the importance of marriage and then getting married when it comes to something like understanding the importance of marriage unfortunately 
Each and every person has their own opinion about this. No two people are going to have the same view as far as what they think marriage may be. And therefore, again, it's something for us to go back to Islam. What does Islam say about this? One person might say, well, I believe that marriage should be at this age. Another person might say, well, I think marriage should be this way. Another person might say, well, I don't really think marriage is that important. Another person might say something else. Well, let's get it uh, straight firstly that with Islam, marriage is always going to be the sunnah of Islam. So much so that, as we know, al-zawaj nusfadeen, marriage is half of religion, as uh, the hadith says. Another hadith says, al-nikahu sunnati, marriage is my sunnah. فَمَنْ رَغِبَ عَنْ سُنَّتِي فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي Someone who avoids, intentionally avoids and stays away from uh, getting married is not from me and is not from is not following the sunnah of uh, islam now of course then we have this karahiyah how makruh and disliked it is for a person to stay single and there are so many ahadith that speak about you know the rewards and the preference of a married person over a single person you know, that this married person, even in his or her sleep, they're gaining more rewards than a single person who's spending that whole night um, in worship. Then you've got these ahadith that say that uh, most people of hellfire are from the singles, are from people who are, are people who are single or one hadith says, Inna al -uzzab. The most wicked of your dead are the single people. Now, of course, you know, if we were to look at uh, this karahiya of uh, being single, uh, intentionally wanting to stay single, and all of those negative things that come about and that the especially the emotional and mental instability that comes about from being uh, single, that is, of course, against the natural instinct of how we function as human beings. We have an urge, and that urge is not just a sexual urge. If it was a sexual urge, then there wouldn't be a stressing on marriage there would be a stressing of okay fulfill your sexual desire but the urge with uh, the human being is one part of the bonus of marriage because marriage accommodates to a lot of different things it's not just keeping uh, one away from sin it's not just fulfilling the sexual desire that a human being has it's also the uh, serenity that a person gets it's also the emotional stability that a person has when they have found their soulmate that their partner that they are going to be living with for the rest of their lives and that's why you are, are able to get that natural instinct satisfied in every level if you follow that which Islam has put forward to you and especially when you are making sure that you follow it within the perimeters and boundaries and based on the regulations and how Islam has regulated it for us. Now of course we're going to um, after establishing, after understanding that uh, something like marriage is of utmost importance and it shouldn't be postponed, it shouldn't be delayed, it should be at, as early as possible. A person should get married as early as possible. That's what our many, many ahadith speak about, about this young person getting married as soon as they are able to, legally, shari, 
when you become of legal age, when you have that maturity, when you have that stability, plan for marriage and get married. Doesn't matter if you're studying, university, uh, looking for work, whatever it may be, marriage is not going to hinder you. It's not going to become an obstacle for any of these things. You can be happily married and you can study at the same time. Who said that you can't? All of these people who say that I don't want to get married until I finish my um, studies or my university or find a stable job. What are you doing during those years where your testosterone level is at its peak? What are you doing? Are you doing halal? Are you doing haram? What are you doing? That's why the ahadith, they say that if a person isn't able to get married, then they should fast to avoid haram. One of the biggest problems that we have in um, today's society is the open accessibility to things like pornography. And what pornography is leading to, other than those uh, moral and mental disturbances that a person has with it being exposed to pornography, they're also going, it's also going to lead them to other shaitani acts like, for example, self-pleasure, masturbation, and all of these other things. And therefore, it's really, really sad to see that there are people who justify their delaying of marriage, but find other means to satisfy their urges. Why do you need to do that? Just imagine if you were married and you had that men mental stability, wouldn't you excel in your studies? Wouldn't you be more successful in your uni degree, whatever it may be, in your work, in anything and everything that you are uh, pursuing? And therefore, it's just a cover up. It's just some way of them wanting to do this or wanting to do that. We need to reintroduce these Islamic values to ourselves and to our family members. And, and before it's too late, before it's too late, and I say this because there are so many, unfortunately, so many brothers and sisters out there who have uh, engaged in some kind of uh, illicit behavior, illicit acts while they were in need of some kind of um, uh, natural satisfaction of their urges of what it is that they need, whether it be emotional or whether it be uh, physical or sexual. And therefore, uh, if he or she is in need, and even before that, and that's why it says, there's one hadith that says that if a person was to get married at a young age, عَجَّ uh, الشَّيْطَانَ The shaytan will, will become uh, incapacitated. They won't be able to, you know, infiltrate uh, into you. Anyway, we can say that there are, after knowing, after establishing that, you know, marriage is the way and it is uh, in its correctly regulated way, what are the different kinds of or types of marriages that a person is able to uh, pursue. I haven't started to speak about um, the requirements for spouse selection, but just before that, I can say very, very br briefly that there are three types of uh, marriages. There are different types of relationships, halal, haram, what, what not, but there are three types of marriages. One marriage is the forced marriage. And as Muslims, we don't believe in that because um, the, it's not going to be called marriage because it's null, it's void, it's invalid, it's batil. So that's out of question. So it leads us to two. Number one is arranged marriage. And that's also turned into a very negative word. And number two is love marriage or love-based marriage. Let's start with number two and then, of course, go to number one, which is arranged marriage.
We can say that uh, marriage by selection or choice, but that pretty much falls under arranged marriage anyway, uh, because love marriage uh, is what is commonly seen as a person wanting to get to know someone and then falling in love with them and then deciding to get married. It might have been their initial intention that they are looking for marriage, but they say, well, I want to find someone myself and I want to fall in love with that person and then I want to get married. Now, is there a problem with that? The problem uh, could be that as strict and as shari'i observant as this person may be, he or she, in their pursuing of someone and falling in love with that person, how are you going to be falling in love with someone who is a non-mahram person to you? How are you able to express your feelings to them for them to also know that you love them and they love you and they are non-mahram and not falling into sin? Here, as Muslims, we know it's all about how we are able to do something with obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have that level of taslim and submission and we want to make sure that what we are doing is morally correct, is religiously uh, valid, because that is what is going to lay the precedent for the rest of my life. Something that starts off with haram will continue on in some form of haram, because that's going to, of course, have an impact on my level of tawfiq as who I am as a a uh, person who is uh, affiliated to a uh, religion. And therefore, for a religious person, for a, a pious person, for a Muslim person, love-based marriage becomes very, very difficult, if not impossible, because you are firstly going to have to love that person and, and, or fall, and fall in love with that person before you even ponder on planning for marriage. And of course, this is going to entail a lot of, as I said, these other haram acts, going out, saying things, doing things, what, what not. In addition to this, how are you going to evaluate someone by falling in love with them uh, and it not be uh, based on your emotions or it not be based on your super, superficial evaluation of that particular person. And this is why, talking statistics here, love-based marriages mostly fall apart very quickly. The reason is because a person isn't looking at the right at the correct traits and qualities of that per particular individual. On top of this, emotions always cloud judgment. Emotions are always going to obstruct you from seeing what you need to see, especially if there are red flags in that person's characteristics. And that's exactly why Amir al-Mu'mineen, Imam Ali alayhi salam, he said, Man ashiqa shay'an, ashiya basaruh. Someone, if someone who loves something, they, their eyes become blind. Wa amarada qalbuh, and their heart becomes sick. You're now madly in love with this person. It doesn't matter if he or she abuses you, if they mistreat you, if they betray you, if they come from a dysfunctional family, if they are not even a part of your own madhab or faith or religion, if they have no good values whatsoever, but you, fall, you fell in love with them, 
and that is going to make you blind, blind in your eyes, blind in your heart. And this is really important. And you are going to be looking with eyes that are wrong. Yani your judgment is going to be wrong. And that's why a lot of people are going to be saying to you, stop, what are you doing? Where are you going? Don't do that. Don't um, carry on with him. She's no good for you. It doesn't matter what everyone's, anyone or everyone says, even your immediate family members. And this is what we see all the time, isn't it? Guy and a girl uh, decide between themselves, fall in love, uh, goes home. Oh, I want to get married to this person. Then all hell breaks loose at home. Whatever the reason may be, whether that person be of a different nationality, a different cultural background, a different religion, uh, different family values, um, whatever it may be, it doesn't matter, you know, and, and, and none of these reasons are that evil or bad for a, pers- a parent to object, by the way. You know, if a person, if a parent, you know, says, look, I would like you to marry um, someone of this particular um, characteristics, that's absolutely fine. What's wrong with that? There's nothing bad about that. If a parent parent doesn't have these particular requirements and says, yeah, you can marry this person or that person, also doesn't matter. The, ro- the wrong thing is for a person to impose who they're going to marry onto their family, onto their parents and say, okay, it's either them or I'm el- eloping. It's either this person or I've got nothing to do with you. It's either this person or this. Of course, you're going to say that because you're madly in love with this uh, individual. So Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam, he says, فَهُوَ يَنْظُرْ بِعَيْنٍ غَيْرُ صَحِيحَةٍ وَيَسْمَعْ بِأُذُنٍ غَيْرُ سَمِيعَةٍ And you hear with ears that can't hear. Right, and you are can he, your hearing that power of hearing is lost. Maybe that person, and this happens very regularly, doesn't it? Is verbally abusing, emotionally abusing you, but yet you can't see it. The, that's why I said red flags. There are red flags right there in front of you, but for you. They make no sense whatsoever. That's what Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam here is uh, referring to. قَدْ خَرُقَتْ الشَّهَوَاتْ عَقْلُهُ وَأَمَاتَتُ الدُّنْيَا قَلْبُهُ Desires have pierced through your heart and worldly matters have killed, uh, sorry, um, Desires have pierced through your your intellect and worldly affairs, worldly matters have killed your heart. Subhanallah, what a beautiful hadith here from Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. And that's why in another hadith it says, إِنَّكَ لَوْ أَطَعْتَ هَوَاكَ أَصَمَّكَ If you uh, follow, if you pursue your desires, your lusts, then you will become deaf وَأَعْمَاكَ and blind as well. Because as Imam Ali السلام, says, الْهَوَى شَرِيكُ الْعَمَى Following your whimsical desires is a, a, a partner's or whimsical desires uh, is the partner to blindness, to blindness. Number one. Number two is love-based marriage a lot more to say about that but let's go to number one arranged marriage arranged marriage doesn't mean that you're uh, you're throwing yourself into a blind date well if westerners say blind date it's okay it sounds appealing it sounds fun it sounds adventurous but when someone says arranged marriage oh backwards very you know old-fashioned 
uh, very controlling and all of these other really bad negative things that people usually say. And that's all because of that, you know, uh, inferiority complexity that a lot of uh, Muslims uh, have, unfortunately, because they want to uh, be liberal. They want to be all the way up there with um, uh, the modern day society and all of these other things. But what we mean by arranged marriage is matchmaking, matchmaking the same way as you have these um, apps and websites where you look for someone, instead of you doing it on an individual basis, Islam says marriage is all about family. It's bringing two families together. And therefore, everyone needs to be involved. The parents needs to be involved. This parent talks to the next door neighbor, talks to a friend, talks to someone in the masjid, talks to someone um, at school and whatnot. Oh, well, my son is of age. My daughter is of age. What do you think? Who do you have in mind? And then they look into it. They see um, they know their son better than their, than anyone else. They know their daughter better, better than anyone else. They look at the compatibilities. They look at the qualities. They look at the family. They look at the reputation. They look at all of these things. And then they come up with some kind of uh, decision. And they offer that to their son or their daughter. Ultimately, the final say is the son's say, is the daughter's say, is his say, the brother's say, whoever it may be. Ultimately, it's their opinion. They need to give the go-ahead. They need to be happy with what it is as far as these uh, um, uh, qualities and background checks and all of these are concerned. What about when it, when it comes to something like um, the... Uh, spouse selection itself of course you know I, as i said you know there are a lot of things that i'm skipping unfortunately like you know uh leaving marriage because you're not financially stable you know there's a beautiful hadith from imam sadiq salam that says Man zawaj al-faqr, faqad azza wa jal. if you avoid marriage out of fear of uh, poverty, then you are thinking negative, you are thinking bad, you are doing so van in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? That's what the Quran says. Allah will give you wealth if you turn to Him and if you pursue uh, marriage. Now, of course, when you want to start a family, marriage is going to be the way for that. Uh, making the right choice as far as your spouse is concerned, spouse selection is concerned. It's not just a matter of fulfilling your natural urges, um, your sexual urges and your emotional needs, but also for the sake of procreation, for the sake of reproducing. You want children as well. You want to build a family. Unfortunately, we have some people in our society today who don't want children, who say, yeah, well, I don't want children. I don't want to introduce children to this world. I don't want to ruin my figure. I don't want this. I don't want that. That's why it's always important to have this discussion as well. Well, what do you think about having children? when, how many, and these things, it's really important as well to um, uh, speak about. Now, what are the primary characteristics that is needed when you are making that choice for a spouse? Number one, being religious, tadayun, not just deen, but tadayun as well, religious being a God-fearing person, a pious person. And not everyone who prays and fasts is necessarily religious or pious or God-fearing. And that's what tadayun um, should mean. Number one, religion, being religious. Number two, akhlaq, 
من جاءكم ممن ترضون بدينه وخلقه فزوجوه أخلاق is also uh, extremely extremely important number two number three good family good reputation a well functioning family a, 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 a healthy family number four being able to produce and bear children and that's why one of the hadith says uh, that you need to look for a person who is walud walud means having excessive or a lot of uh, children of course as far as a wife is concerned her being modest her being shy her observing the highest standards of inner hijab and outer hijab that's very important loyalty is going to be important and of course compatibility as well even compatibility in ideology also you want to make sure that your spouse is on the same page with you as far as aqidah as far as faith you want to introduce ahlul bayt alayhim to your children you want to make sure that your children are passionately involved with the imams right you don't want someone of another for example madhab or someone of another uh, religion or whatnot and them not feeding them the love of ali wa alu ali that's really important as well now of course on the other side you know the husband wants these kind of qualities the wife also needs to make sure that she wants a husband who is caring who is involved who is there for them who is really al mujahid fi sabilillah al kad ala iyalih kal mujahid fi sabilillah he's do- he's doing all of these things for his family not for hobbies not for money not for fame but for his family. So she wants to marry someone who isn't, you know, involved in haram, who doesn't have a bad reputation, who doesn't have, uh, for example, a bad past or things like that, who doesn't have red flags as far as what it is that she can see uh, in his traits. You know, maybe he's a suspicious man. Maybe he's a controlling man. Maybe he is a irresponsible man. All of these things you're able to easily pick up by asking other people, by seeing his traits, by also monitoring how his family is uh, as well. Anyway, there are many ahadith that I also wanted to uh, mention on uh, this topic. But one hadith, it says, uh, from the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he says Tunkahul nisa li arba that women are you usually marry a woman for four reasons Limaliha it's either because of her money li jamaliha either because of her uh, wealth all right I should let me read it from the uh, hadith itself li arba limaliha because of her money li hasabiha because of her lineage, yani for example, so-and-so, she's bint fulan, she's the daughter of so-and-so, or he's the son of so-and-so, right? Lineage. Lijamaliha, walijamaliha, because of her beauty, because of how beautiful she is. Walidiniha, or because of how religious she is. And then the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam says, Fadfar bidhati deen tar Taribet, taribet yadak. I'm going to explain what taribet means. But you are going to be successful if you choose she who has the religion. Yani she who is religious. Religious. And when we say religious, we really mean mutadayinah, multazimah, that she is a pious woman. Taribat yadak. In Arabic, this is an expression that basically means your hands are going to be um, uh, get dirty from dirt, from soil. Taribat yadak, which means you're going to become poor. 
but the expression here is that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying pay attention, pay attention to this important point. You may be blessed and it's a way of encouraging us to make us aware that you don't pursue someone based on those traits but only based on her uh, religion because the Holy Prophet had said Man imra'atan limaliha wa kalahullah ilayh. If you get married, if you marry a woman because of her money, God will turn you to that. Woman tazawajaha li jamaliha ra'a fiha ma yakrah. If you get married to a woman because of her beauty, then you are going to see that which you hate. You are going to see that which you hate. What man tazawajaha li diniha jama'allahu lahu dhalik. And if you marry someone purely because of how religious she is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you all of these. He will give you wealth. He will give you beauty. He will give you all of uh, these. Now, of course, there are many other things that we need to uh, take into consideration as far as the uh, genealogical qualities, the DNA, the family, the traits. All of these things are a part of what we can see in the overall plan of spouse selection. There are beautiful books that you are able to read on this topic of how you are able to uh, choose a marriage, how you are able to uh, find the best ways for a marriage proposal. You know, in our custom as Muslims, you know, girls, they don't go around hunting for men, right? They usually, uh, someone comes and asks for their hand in marriage. It's for her to decide, for her to choose whether she is going to accept this marriage proposal or not. How does she choose? How do you choose my sister? What qualities do you need to look at? This is really important for you to look into and to study. Inshallah, we will continue on with uh, this topic of our 10-day family plan in our next episode. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi tahirin. Yeah.